Welcome to the Ham Radio Weekend Forecast for August 23rd and 24th, 2025. This presentation provides a detailed overview of the expected HF, VHF, and UHF band conditions, solar activity, and significant radio events. Whether you're chasing DX or participating in contests, this forecast offers a strategic playbook to maximize your on-air success. You'll get insights on which bands to watch and when to operate them. Let's get started by taking a snapshot look at the big picture of radio propagation this weekend. The overall space weather conditions for August 23rd and 24th are favorable for HF operation. The solar flux index, the F10.7, is forecasted at 120 to 125 solar flux units, indicating strong chances for higher frequency HF bands to open, particularly 20, 17, and 15 meters. If the KP index remains low, even 12 or 10 meters could be available during daylight hours. Geomagnetic activity remains quiet with an AP index around 5. This suggests stable and less noisy propagation, ideal for DX and contesting. Quiet geomagnetic conditions help reduce fading and maintain better signal integrity on all HF bands. There is a slight risk of M-class solar flares that could trigger short-lived HF disruptions on the sunlit side of Earth. While not overly concerning, it's wise to keep an eye on the NOAA real-time alerts, especially during active periods. HF band conditions look promising for this upcoming weekend. 40 meters will be the nighttime workhorse, ideal for reliable regional communications with occasional DX. It's a band that should easily stay consistent as the sun sets. During the day, 20 meters will dominate. It's predicted to be the most productive and stable HF band across both days. Operators will find it useful for both rag chewing and contesting. The real opportunity lies in 17 and 15 meters during daylight. These bands often support long-haul DX and will perform well given the elevated F10.7 levels. Lastly, 12 and 10 meters, while conditional, could deliver some surprises. If the KP index stays suppressed, try probing those bands around midday for openings. The NOAA Outlook also includes probabilities for solar flare-induced radio blackouts, giving operators a clearer sense of risk heading into the weekend. For August 23rd and 24th, there is a steady 10% probability of minor to moderate radio blackouts corresponding to R1 and R2 events. These typically result from M-class flares and may cause temporary HF signal degradation on the sunlit side of Earth. Meanwhile, the chance for major R3 level blackouts or higher remains very low at just 1% per day. These events require strong X-class flares and could cause widespread HF outages. While the forecasts reflect calm space weather outlooks, it's still wise to monitor real-time NOAA alerts through the weekend. The NOAA R-Scale classifies radio blackouts based on solar flare strength. These events primarily affect HF communications on the sunlit side of Earth, often without much warning. An R1 event corresponds to a minor disruption due to M1 through M5 class flares. These typically cause brief degradation but are often manageable. R2 events are moderate and link to stronger M-class flares up to M9. These may cause more significant and longer-lasting HF outages. R3 and above, triggered by X-class flares, can create severe blackouts. R3 events can shut down HF for up to an hour, while R4 and R5 may take entire bands offline for extended periods. Operators should monitor NOAA alerts and be prepared to shift bands or wait out high-impact events. For VHF and UHF enthusiasts, this weekend brings multiple propagation possibilities. On 6 meters, the late season ease, sporadic ease season, continues. While activity has tapered, there is still potential for brief openings. Make sure to watch cluster spots and consult recent logs for timing clues. The tail end of the Presidus meteor shower means the meteor scatter remains viable, especially during the early morning hours. MSK144 is the go-to digital mode for catching these fleeting bursts, so have your sequences ready. On 2 meters and 70 centimeters, keep an eye on the tropo maps. If your region is under hot, stagnant, high-pressure systems, ducting could enhance signal paths for hundreds of kilometers, particularly during the early morning and late evening hours. The August 23rd and 24th weekend is packed with exciting on-air events. The Hawaii QSO party spans two days, starting at 400 Zulu on Saturday and wrapping up the same time on Monday. It's a great chance to snag contacts from the islands. The YODX HF contest kicks off at noon UTC Saturday and runs for 24 hours. This international event draws participation from around the globe and is great for chasing multipliers and DX. Stateside, the Ohio QSO party launches Saturday at 1600 Zulu and ends at 400 Zulu on Sunday. It offers plenty of county-based multiplier hunting. Also noteworthy is the CVA DX contest single sideband, which begins at 1800 Zulu Saturday and extends into Sunday evening. A great opportunity to log a single sideband contacts from South America. Be sure to review the rules and logging formats ahead of time. 
To make the most out of the weekend, follow this tactical operation guide. During the daylight hour, stick primarily to 20, 17, and 15 meters. They'll offer the most reliable and consistent conditions. However, keep an ear on 12 and 10 meters periodically. If the KP stays low, you might catch some surprising openings. As night falls gradually shift from 20 meters down to 40, the latter becomes more stable and effective as D-layer absorption drops. If you notice your signals suddenly vanish during the day, you might be experiencing some minor solar flare. If it's an R1 or R2 level of flare, expect a recovery window of about 20 to 60 minutes. On VHF, keep digital tools like MSK144 close in hand for meteor scatter, especially pre-dawn. And don't forget to check the tropo maps. Short-term openings can greatly enhance your reach for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.